Hey, I'm Tony Moreland, and this is the Samsung Developers Podcast, where we chat with innovators using Samsung technologies, award-winning app developers and designers, as well as insiders working on the latest Samsung tools. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 2. On today's show, I'm joined by Derek Lee, Content Manager at Polycube, winners of the 2021 Best of Galaxy Store Award for Best Theme Collection. Not only do we chat about their approach to designing and marketing amazing themes, but also how Polycube is looking to expand their use of contract designers from their home country of Korea to include designers from all around the world so that they can create for a global audience. Enjoy. Hey, Derek, it is great to have you on the podcast. Hello, Tony. It's, it's great to see you. Thank you for having me. So I like to start the podcast with who is... Derek Lee. Um, well, I'm a person who appreciates and enjoys all forms of art, like paintings, digital graphics, music, everything. I actually majored in industrial designing myself, and I also love singing. You know, as I said, all forms of art. I had no idea that you had a big uh, appreciation for for art and for music. I actually do myself. I, well, I see a guitar. I see several guitars behind you right now. Yeah, yeah. Now, I know the, the, the folks listening to this, um, it's only for their audio, but yes, uh, we've got some cameras. Derek can see. I've got a few <laughs> guitars in the background. I like to pretend that I know how to sing, but uh, still have yet to get the courage to actually sing in front of somebody. So um, yeah. great to hear that you have that appreciation and that ability. Yeah, I'm not that good at singing either. I just love it. That's awesome. That's awesome. So Derek, you are a content manager at Polycube. Tell me a little bit about that role. Well, that role is essentially giving out guidelines for designers coming up with something good visually. I think it could be better if somebody is giving out guidelines on which designs can, you know, resonate with people a little bit more, not just with themselves. That's my role at Polycube. My um, background is uh, really in graphic design. Oh, okay. That, that's where I spent much of my career. And I've worked with many art directors. So it sounds like even though you call yourself a, a content manager, mm -hmm. uh, to me, it sounds like that role really fits that art director role. Yeah. Well, any way you can call it. Yeah. So how long have you been at Polycube? Um, I have been at Polycube for about three years now. Just about the same amount of time that I've been uh, at Samsung. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you had said that you that you majored in industrial design. Um, interesting. I actually minored in industrial design. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah. we've got a few similarities, not just in uh, in music and singing, but also with our, <laughs> our love for industrial design. Yes, we do. I understand that coming out of college, you didn't just dive right into tech, that you actually were selling donuts from a truck? Yeah, I have been selling donuts for about, I think about 18 months. And I really enjoyed it. You know, don't get me wrong. I, I didn't quit doing that because I didn't like it. But I really wanted to be involved in a design business in any way, shape or form. Sure. That's something I wanted to do more. Um, and I figured out that, you know, Polycube was a company that was designing themes and I thought it could be exciting. So I jumped in. That's great. So now, now Polycube is uh, from Seoul, correct? That's where your headquarters is? Yes. And, and that's where I'm assuming that's where, where you live? Yeah, I live like 20 minutes away and it's a beautiful city. I hope in the future when there are no barriers such as COVID-19, I hope our supporters all around the world can visit for a nice trip. So, so you're in Seoul, Korea, but your English sounds so good. I can tell you must have spent some time in the, in the States here. <laughs> well, when I was five years old, my dad um, got a job in the States, in New Orleans, actually. And we lived there for about nine years. Wow. And then even after I came back to Korea, I, you know, I stayed in Korea for a year and then in, in New Orleans for a year. And I've been going back and forth. But in Korea... Uh, military service is mandatory. I stayed here for two years and then I started selling donuts, as I mentioned earlier. So <laughs> sure. yeah, yeah, it's been a while. And now COVID. Yeah. So I, I've been staying in Korea for a while, but yeah, I do miss New Orleans. So I'm guessing that your love for music probably came a bit out of uh, your time in New Orleans. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. I, I, I love jazz. I love, you know, Stevie Wonder. Of course. Th those were the Those were the artists that really, you know, you know, set a fire inside me. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's okay. great. No, I was fortunate that actually a few months before COVID hit, um, I actually went out to Seoul, Korea, because that is where Samsung's headquarters is. So I got to spend a week there. Absolutely beautiful city. Um, so much to explore, but boy, do I want to get back. There was a lot that I did not see. I would like to be your guide if you happen to come again one day. Yeah. 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 I'll take you up on it for sure. 
So, so about Polycube, the company itself, they've been around for quite a while and I know that they do much more than just theme. So tell me a bit about the history of Polycube mm -hmm. um, and what are some of those areas that they, that they also work on? You know, we have quite a history and actually 2021 was our 20th anniversary. Wow. We came a long way developing apps, making games and designing themes, watch faces and whatnot. Yeah. And now the name Polycube, I'm, I'm wondering, is there an interesting story behind, uh, behind that name? Um, well, our founder wanted a name that emphasizes the importance of diversity in a group. And um, if you look at the etymology of poly, you know, it means many sided. Sure. So our founder thought that it was a perfect name. Cube was added because, you know, if you look at the cube, the shape, it has it also has many sides. You know, you, you have to have many sides to form a cube. Right. So that's how poly and cube got together and formed the name Polycube. You had mentioned that you do more than just themes. Well, we also make a lot of games. You know, one that we're really working on these days is um, a game called Poker Master. It has been around, but we're trying to, you know, find rooms for improvement sure. to update the game so that more people can enjoy it. Now, is that game on the Galaxy Store at the moment? Yes, it is. Excellent. And we're we're trying to make it better and better. It has been around for a while, but we're trying to improve it all the time. Sure. And we also design themes and watch faces. We're, we're really um, trying to improve our watch face designs these days. So I hope, you know, it will get bigger and bigger. Yeah, I was checking out some of your designs earlier. I love the, the, the very classic feel of, of many of your designs. That means a lot coming from you because you're, you're a designer yourself. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's actually how I got my start with Samsung. Uh, for those that don't know, oh, okay. I was uh, doing um, my graphic design gig, started designing watch faces, selling them on the Galaxy Store. <laughs> okay. Got noticed by a few people at Samsung, made a few phone calls. And before you know it, I was uh, working for Samsung teaching how to design watch faces. Then that really means a lot coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> Polycube, uh, I think it's, you said it's about 30 employees. Well, 31 exactly. And we have 11 designers among those 31 employees. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, are these uh, a split between full-time employees and are some contractors? Yeah, full-time employees and contractors all together, 31. Okay. And all of our 11 designers are all full. They, they work full-time. Wow. Okay. That's great. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know a lot of uh, designers and developers listen to this podcast, always looking for opportunities to, um, you know, look for new work Okay. by any chance is Polycube looking for, for new designers. We are actually planning on recruiting a lot of designers from, from abroad sure. starting this year because we want diversity in our group. I, I guess the best way is you can look us up because we have a website, but also you can send an email. The email address is master at polycube.co.kr. Okay. And if you send an email anytime, we will take a close look at it and yeah, we'll pay attention. That's awesome. So what is the web address for Polycube? Oh, it's, it's very simple. It's www.polycube.co.kr. Got it. And that's P-O-L-Y-C-U-B-E. I mean, it's very simple. How long would you say Polycube has been designing themes? Polycube has been designing themes for about six years now because we started on 2016. So six years, I would guess that you were probably one of the first theme designers to, uh, to get onto the platform. So how did the, the people at Polycube first learn about the opportunity to design themes for Samsung and sell them on the Galaxy Store? You know, we were just normal Galaxy phone users at first. And, you know, we naturally just got to know about themes on our phones because we were using our phones, obviously. And we kind of had some time to sit down together and talk about it because we thought we could really jump into it and make a business out of it. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Every designer that I have interviewed on the podcast has said the same story that they were first just a user and, you know, saw the opportunity to, to customize their own phone and then thought, well, heck, I could do this myself. So what about some of the other areas of theme designing? Are you guys also selling, you know, wallpapers, AODs, icon packs, things like that? Yes. Everything you just, you just said right now, we, we do sell wallpapers, icon packs, yeah, AODs. So last year, we had the 2021 Best of Galaxy Store Award show, and Polycube was the recipient of the Best Theme Collection Award. Yes, we were. <laughs> Tell me what that uh, meant to you and your company for, for winning that award. Well, first of all, of course, we are very grateful for the awards. 
And this award is to us is、um, is something that really started such a positive momentum for us because ever since we got the news that we were winning the award, we are feeling you know we actually feel、um, a positive momentum that started from that award. So it's something that started such a positive momentum for us. That's great, yeah. And your truthfully, your collection is amazing. Oh, thank.、You. I do sit on the the board of the folks here at Samsung that gets to vote on、uh, the winners. Yeah, I was very happy to see you、uh, win the well deserved award for best theme collection. Oh, thank you.、Um, in what ways have you promoted winning the award?、Um, through you know the mainstream social media such as YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, we're everywhere. Are you using Galaxy Store badges to to help promote、uh, what you do at Polycube? We are always looking for chances to utilize our Galaxy badge everywhere we can use it because it's a good system. You know, the Galaxy badge, all you have to do is just click on it, and then you can take a look at our you know collection of themes. Sure. And when it comes to discoverability, what are some of the、uh, the platforms, some of the techniques that you guys do, just to help people find find Polycube out there in the in the world? Um, we have we do have links that lead to our Facebook and Instagram page in all of the descriptions in the themes that we publish. So you had mentioned YouTube, and I know that that is one of the best tools that designers are using to help you know promote their work.、Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming then、um, you guys are creating videos. Yeah, we are creating videos.、Um, I don't have the exact number with me right now, but I think we have more than four thousand videos. That's great. And then you're leveraging those videos also on、uh, platforms like Instagram. Yes, we are. Now you had mentioned Facebook. Tell me what is the、uh, the best way for people to find your Facebook page? Well, it's www. facebook. com slash friends. dot polycube. Oh, that's easy. I love that polycube friends. <laughs> Thank you. You know, when I started my company for doing、uh, themes and watch faces, I added the word buzz to the end, so you could find my Instagram at axier buzz. Axier buzz. Okay. It has a positive vibe to it. So, Polycube Friends is that pretty much the handle that you'll use across other platforms? So, like on Instagram? Yes, it is. Yes. Now, you had mentioned four thousand videos, but I know you guys have a lot more when it comes to themes. What would you say your total theme count is right now? In total, we published six thousand three hundred and eighty-seven themes. That's crazy. What would you say are the total downloads that you have on those six thousand themes? About twenty-five million. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy! I was excited when I got to my first million downloads.、Um, I am a long ways away from twenty-five. <laughs> it's, it's it's very humbling when we think about it. With that many themes, I'm sure that you're starting to look at different topics, different areas, so you can see really what is resonating with the、uh, with the customer base.、Um, what are some of those categories that you would say your themes fall under?、Um, we're all, always looking for diversity in our designs, but all, but there is. Some categories that really resonate with people more than others. Sure. For example,、um, design skulls and butterflies and flowers. I think those are you know some themes that really resonate with people a lot. You know, regardless of country, regardless of gender. Yeah, I noticed. I saw one of your themes、uh, was a skull, but it was a steampunk skull, and I love steampunk. I love that look. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, that's a that's a great theme. So, outside of some of those areas,、um, seasonal wise, I mean, do you see like a, a importance to design themes related to holidays or to seasons? Oh, definitely, es- especially Christmas and Halloween. I think those are two holidays that really,、um, sure, really boost the market, if you will. I-, I wish there were more designs on like Mardi Gras, since I'm from New Orleans. Yeah, but Halloween and Christmas are, you know, the two holidays. Yeah, I- I've 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 heard that from from many other folks as well. Great times to be stylizing your phone for sure. Yes, yes, it is. So you know, Polycube's had a lot of a success, and you know, it's obviously this wasn't overnight because you've been doing it for a while.、Um, but tell me, was there like one sort of pivotal moment in your history that you were like, "Oh my gosh, this really is starting to take off," or was it truthfully just a gradual growth that you've done over the years? It was gradual to a certain extent, but when we first started to actually design themes and try to make a business out of it.、Um, The first six months, I don't think we were getting a lot of downloads. The downloads that we were expecting, and you know the support that we were expecting. I mean, of course, we had some, you know, very good supporters that, you know, kept us kept us going when we weren't getting the results that we wanted. But after six months, we were seeing the growth. When it comes to numbers, when it comes to you know the supporters, sure, and things like that. Yeah, I know. And speaking with a lot of other designers, I mean, it takes an investment in time before you start to see really any any bit of return.、Mm-hmm. 
some of that comes to just getting your name out there and it's not just publishing your themes your watch faces on galaxy store but it's that mm -hmm. additional marketing that you do so you know once you put some time into your instagram or into your facebook page yes um that's when you start to see the uh, the return mm -hmm. yes definitely so you've got a lot of designers on hand yes where are these designers getting their ideas first our designers you know just come up with literally a sketch on their notebooks with their pens but also um where we get ideas is from the reviews ah our supporters all around the world they are not just helping by supporting they are actually really helping out through reviews because when we read them they they really offer some great ideas and insights got it so when people are posting comments after they've purchased one of your themes mm -hmm. you guys are really looking at those comments to think like okay what could we either you know expand on this topic or maybe the comment is yeah this one isn't really for me and then maybe your team you know, starts to look in other areas? Yeah, well, well, you know, sometimes the reviews are very specific. It's not just I like it or I don't like it. There are a lot of reviews that say I don't like it, but I would like it if it was this, if it was that. Oh. Yeah, those are the reviews that really give us really good ideas. That's great to hear. So a lot of uh, companies leverage stock photography when it comes to creating their designs. Yes. Which I know can kind of be a, a hot topic because truthfully, you know, there's, there's licensing that, that gets involved whenever you're using stock imagery. Mm -hmm. And also the reality that, that anybody can go and, you know, purchase a certain stock image and, and build a theme out of it. Mm -hmm. um, but what are you guys doing to help set yourself apart when you are leveraging stock imagery? Of course, there are a lot of good sources out there that can be utilized and be modified into great themes. But as you just said, there are some some issues when it comes to just, you know, using those stock imagery and turning them into themes. Right. So we have um, a whole team that really looks into the licensing parts to prevent any legal issues, if you will. And we have designers that really keep that in mind that you just don't take the stock imagery and just copy that and just put it in your phone. And that doesn't really make a theme. You know, we go through plenty modifying and we add ideas to it and you know all of a sudden it's it's not just that stock imagery it's it's something totally different that's great i've actually spoken with many other uh theme designers on the podcast and they've all said the same thing that you know they they leverage the use of stock imagery mm -hmm. but they take those images and build them into a, an image that is their own that is something that is unique yes yes so you had mentioned um Pencil sketching. So tell mm -hmm. me what the workflow is. I mean, do you, are your designers actually traditionally grabbing a pencil and paper and, and starting to sketch some of their concepts? Yeah, it's 2022, but that's that's still where it starts. You know, first, you know, they, they literally come up with a sketch with a pen or a pencil, and then we actually have a meeting. We look at all those sketches and we discuss which ones we will actually go for. Yeah. Um, once the designs materialize, we sit down again and discuss whether there is room for improvement or revising. And then after that, we publish them and hope that our supporters enjoy them. That, that is excellent to hear. You know, in my experience as a designer, mm -hmm. I would often tell other designers that, yes, that is the first step is to grab pencil and paper because you don't get caught up in all the tools that, you know, software allows you to do or limits you to do. Um, you don't get caught up in colors or specific, mm -hmm. you know, shapes that may be in the way. You truthfully see the skeleton of the design. And if that skeleton works, then you know it's something that's worth pursuing. Yeah, yeah. Great to hear that the, that you guys take that uh, approach to to design. So, you know, the process of starting with sketch and then going through meetings and, and developing the designs all the way to publishing, mm -hmm. how long do you think that typically takes your team to do? Um, from just a sketch on a notebook to an actual theme, I would say one theme takes four days, maybe five. I would say that's a pretty, pretty quick, aggressive uh, <laughs> timeline. Although sometimes it would take me weeks to do. So. <laughs> yeah, because we don't want, you know, we don't want to keep our supporters waiting. So sure. we work hard. What applications are you using when you uh, are doing your design work? Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and After Effects. Oh, so After Effects for... For doing videos, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you doing any animated like wallpapers where you're leveraging motion graphics? Yeah, we actually have a whole, there's a team that really focuses on only the video parts. Okay. The animation parts that really help out if another team comes up with the, the sketch. Sure. And, you know, the basis, then, you know, there is another whole team, designing team that really helps out with um, sophisticated designing when it comes to the videos. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's great. 
So I know a lot of designers utilize the strategy of free mm-hmm. when it comes to marketing their their apps. So tell me about your experience. Well, what's your strategy when it comes to free themes, free watch faces? Yeah, we are offering free themes um, every week and we promote them every Friday. And I think our supporters deserve free themes, you know, sure. every once in a while. And, you know, if you check out our Facebook and Instagram page, you'll see that there are actually quite a lot of opportunities to get some awesome themes for free. Yeah, I think that I think that is great. I know what I teach typically is that it's nice to offer up a free app, a free design, mm-hmm. but you don't want to inundate the market with too many of your free yeah. themes, free watch faces, because then everyone's going to expect that there's always going to be some good free stuff out there. So use it as a way to encourage the community to uh, get to try out your your stuff, Mm -hmm. uh, your themes. And then that way, they're more inclined and more trustworthy to actually put money behind some of their purchases and and buy some of your your items. Especially for people who never you know, used to the theme before. We want them to really get to know what a theme is, you know, why yeah. a theme is, is exciting to have a theme on your phone. Let's talk about some of the challenges because I know, you know, this whole market is not as easy as just creating something nice and, and posting it. Um, so what are some of the challenges that you face when it comes to designing themes and marketing those themes? We hope that our themes satisfy as many people as possible globally because themes are global. But sometimes figuring out how the taste like differs depending on cultures and countries, it's, it's, sure. not, it's not the easiest thing to do. You know, we come up with one design, but people here like it, but people there don't. We are greedy, if you will, in a positive way. We want to satisfy as many people as possible globally. So that's not so that would be a challenge. Of course. Yeah, no, that is that is. And I know that a lot of times designers are leveraging the ability to have localization Mm -hmm. for their app. So this is where, you know, you're selling the theme globally, but you can say, you know, in the U.S. market, this is what the description looks like Mm -hmm. Um, in, you know, a a market in Asia. This is what the description looks like or in Germany. Yes. I know that, you know, designers do see a nice increase um, in revenue when they are utilizing localization. So I'm assuming, are you guys using that feature as well? Yes, we are. The descriptions look all different um, depending on the country, the language. You had mentioned COVID earlier. Um, Obviously, we still are in the middle of COVID. How has that impacted Polycube? Of course, COVID-19 is very negative, but for us, it has done nothing but boost our motivation because COVID-19 stopped people from expressing themselves through their faces by making them wear masks, right? So we were more motivated to help help people express themselves on their phones instead through well-designed, customized themes. You know, that was nice to hear. Um, it's something I hadn't really thought about that. No. Yes, the face is being covered by your mask. So how else can you express, you know, your your look, your style? Yeah. And that's where people are customizing their phones, obviously, to uh, to represent themselves. Yeah, because nowadays I think your phone is your second face. For sure. It shows who you are. So what is in the, the future for Polycube? You know, we are actually planning to come up with some very innovative designs that have never been applied to themes before. You know, if you look at themes, of course, there there is diversity. You know, you can see all sorts of designs in the themes market, but sometimes, you know, you run into some designs that make you think that, oh, this is nice, but it, it might not look well on themes. But we are trying to break that wall and come up with some very innovative designs that have never been applied to themes before. Nice. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what, what Polycube uh, produces out of that. Now, you had mentioned uh, diversity, and I, I love everything you've been talking about like when it comes to diversity with your designs and, and the global reach for that. Tell me specifically about Polycube. What are you guys doing when it comes to diversity and inclusion? We are actually planning on recruiting designers from abroad. Ah. It, it doesn't matter where you're from. Sure. You can be from the United States. You can be from Canada. You can be from Japan, wherever. Because we don't want to end up stuck in one way of thinking when it comes to designing and promoting. Yeah. And I think that's that could be one of the best ways to stop that from happening. Sure. Because I know just culturally wise, mm-hmm. you know, people from specific cultures just have a way of approaching their designs. Mm-hmm. So to hear that you are looking for designers, you know, from other cultures, mm-hmm. I think is a great way to to ensure that, that you really are offering up great work globally. Yeah, thank you. 
So, you know, there are a lot of other theme designers out there. A lot of companies have had success. Is there one company that really comes to mind when you think of a, a theme designer that you really like? I think that a company called Echo Visuals. Yes. Yeah. If, if you check out their themes, they're excellent. And we took a lot of inspiration from them. Yeah. No, I, I've heard that from many designers. Echo Visuals does amazing work. And I know that they are very active on, on Facebook and other social media platforms, really doing a lot of stuff around marketing. So just another good example of how a company uh, does more than just create their themes, but they have to do all that work behind the, the marketing. Yeah. So I know you sound very passionate when it comes to your work at Polycube, but what is it that you do outside of Polycube to, uh, to have a little fun? Well... I obviously love themes, but I don't think about them 24-7. Um, yeah, I need some time off to, you know, re-energize myself. I train jujitsu. Do you? Yeah. I, I actually had a dream of becoming a commentator in mixed martial arts. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that never came to fruition, obviously. But um, I'm, I'm still a fan of the sport. I really follow it. And it doesn't just help physically. It helps mentally, which ultimately leads to better productivity. I, I love hearing that aspect of it. You know, for me, I do a lot of cycling. Oh, okay. And it, it's not so much for the exercise mm -hmm. part of it. It's the mental side of, of getting out, getting away, being unplugged, either taking in the sights or, or enjoying the, uh, you know, the fresh air. Yeah, I totally understand. One last question for you. Okay. What is your favorite donut? My favorite donut? Um, <laughs> well, I always go with the classics chocolate donuts of course yeah yeah well not 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 just with donuts like with i think that's just how i am with with anything i always go with the classics really? like hamburgers like a, everything i always like the original yeah and actually do you know what beignets are no i don't no it, it's it's um it's kind of i want to call it a donut but some people do call it call them donuts yeah it's something that you can have when you come to new orleans oh i'll have to give that a give that a try is there anything unique to uh, korea when it comes to donuts um to korea um when when anything comes to korea like when 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 pizza first came to korea sure you know it, it, it was a long time but korea like really likes you know making a thousand flavors of pizzas a thousand flavors <laughs> of hamburgers a thousand <laughs> flavors of everything yeah ice creams yeah so yeah i think that could be one thing that you can enjoy if, you know, people from abroad travel Korea. You know, there are things that you wouldn't have imagined. How funny that you say that. So um, when I was in Korea, I remember going to a restaurant that it was strictly cakes. <laughs> and it was, like you said, it was like a thousand different cakes. And you would go in there and walk through all the showcases of everything. Mm -hmm. And then you would pick your slice. <laughs> and it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I can't even imagine like what flavors they have. It was a dream. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Derek, I really appreciate you taking the time. It was great to chat with you. I'm looking forward to uh, 2022 to see what more Polycube uh, does when it comes to creating beautiful designs. Oh, okay, thank you. Looking to start creating for Samsung? Download the latest tools to code your next app. Or get software for designing apps without coding at all. Sell your apps to the world on the Samsung Galaxy Store. Check out developer.samsung.com today and start your journey with Samsung. The Samsung Developers Podcast is hosted by Tony Moreland and produced by Jeannie Sue.